Hello everyone, this is uh, Mr. Stevens, and I'm going to try something brand new for, to me, is to record a presentation for you. Uh, this is on sound. Um, I have attached some notes to uh, look at. You can fill them in, and uh, unlike class, when I go really fast, you can uh, just pause it when you want to, so I guess that might be better. I hope everybody's doing well, and hopefully we'll be back to normal soon. All right, so sound is the second chapter we're doing in Waves. And as we said before, all sounds will, all waves or originate with a vibration of some type. So sound needs a material to operate, to vibrate through. It can be air, it can be water, solid. And the frequency of the sound waves is produced by the vibration frequency. Pitch is something that we, have interpret our brains interpret something as pitch we hear a high pitch sound or a low pitch sound and actually our brain is just interpreting the frequencies so a high frequency like a piccolo or a whistle would sound very high notes and we and that's a very high frequency a low pitch sound like a foghorn or an elephant would be very low frequencies so our brain is actually converting that into what you hear as sound Now, normally a person, so you all hopefully have a good hearing, and you can hear frequencies from about 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz. And what happens is as you get older, like I am, uh, your range sinks, uh, shrinks considerably, especially at the higher end. The high end um, noises get really hard to detect. So what I have is a, uh, you can do this yourself. Uh, you can do a tone generator. So, uh, you just Google online tone generator, you can have it now. If you have sensitive hearing, I'm not sure how this comes across in the broadcast. So, let's just say I'm going to put 400 hertz here. Well, that's close enough. So, you hear that tone, that's 400 hertz. 440 is what we call A for musicians out there. So, each uh, musical note that you know has a frequency. So here we go. I'm going to go down lower. And you can do like a little hearing test. I'm going to turn my volume up a little bit. And if your ears are sensitive, I would say turn down your volume now. Okay. So here we go. So I dropped off around here. I can barely hear that. So that's where my hearing low end is. Now, if I go up in the scale, this is where people might get annoyed if uh, you have good hearing. This might start to really annoy you. So if you're wearing hear earphones or something, I'll, I'll just uh, just be careful. I'm going to turn down my volume. You notice it gets louder as the frequency gets higher. Turn down my volume even more. That's where I lose it. So if you can hear this, you have really good hearing. Okay. So you can play with that uh, on your own to see what the different tones are. It's pretty cool. Don't turn off the tone. Stop. Uh, this wave here gives you different. It creates. It can create different wave frequencies. We're not gonna. I think I move myself around here. Sine wave is the most natural hearing for us because it's natural frequencies. Okay, let's stop this. All right, now going back to here. Oops, why did this go back to the beginning? Again, this is the first time doing this, so bear with me. All right, so. So 20 to 20,000 is human hearing. Anything below 20 hertz, we call infrasonic. And anything above 20,000 hertz is ultrasonic. So infrasonic would be things um, like, I, I think whales speak in this, can uh, make these kind of low, really low frequencies and they travel very far, like thousands of miles underwater. Um, elephants can talk to each other below our hearing range and they use those frequencies below 20 hertz. 
Um, above 20,000 hertz, do dogs are famous for hearing higher frequencies. So if you have a dog whistle, we'll probably be in this 30 to 40,000 range where humans can't hear, but the dog will hear it. Um, bats actually use up to 100,000 hertz, and this ultrasonic is how they hunt for the prey. They can locate uh, flying insects with this kind of uh, sonar, almost. It's a, they use this form of sonar. Um, so. uh, the other thing, ultrasounds are used for medical. They can do readings, uh, uh, taking images of inside your body, frequently used for uh, pregnant mothers who want to see their babies are developing right. Okay, let's go on to the next one. All right, so if you burp, the sound pulse goes out in all directions, and the air is actually vibrating away from you, and you're moving along in the expanding wave. It's a compression. So if, uh, remember the slinky lab we did. Uh, if you push on the slinky and pull it back, so you just push back and forth, uh, you'll make a compression. That compression will travel down the slinky, and in between compressions is almost a stretching of the slinky. A slinky. So air does the same thing. Air compresses and this compression moves down and between the uh, compressions are this kind of low pressure area. Uh, this this is called a compression and in between is called a rarefaction. Oops. Uh, so sound is really just a series of these compressions and rarefactions and that's what your brain... Oh, let me get that off. Let me get this to go away. Not sure. All right. So compressions and refractions just travel around. All right. It does require medium to travel through. Uh, we have a vacuum chamber at school, and if we were in school, I could probably try this. Uh, I'll put my I put my cell phone in here, and then you you take the vacuum out of the uh, chamber here, and you won't hear the noise because sound can't travel in vacuum. So if you have a vacuum pump, and we can demonstrate this when we come back, it's pretty cool. And But sound can travel through solids. It can travel through liquids. It can travel gases. It's the most popular. You know, that's what we're used to. But you can hear underwater, and you can even hear through solids. Uh, so why can't sound travel through a vacuum? Well, there's just no medium there to vibrate. Uh, the speed of sound in a gas depends on the temperature of the gas and the mass of the particles in the gas. So, you know, everybody's probably tried the helium balloon trick. If you inhale helium and then speak, your voice goes up in pitch because it's a low-density gas. Uh, there's another gas, uh, krypton, I forget the name of it, but or argon. is a denser gas, and you'll actually sound lower. So. The speed of sound is actually fastest in solids because it depends on how many particles are in place and how fast that can travel. So the atoms in solid matter, oops, the atoms in solid matter are packed really close together that they can respond quickly. So if you put your ear on a railroad track, you'll actually hear the train moving, coming along the tracks way before you can hear it in the um, with your in the air. You can demonstrate this with your friends if you have a steel fence, and this will comply with social distancing because you can be more than six feet apart. So stand at one end of the fence with a metal pole and put your ear on it and then have your friends stand way at the other end and hit the metal with something. You'll actually hear the sound through the metal first, and then you'll hear it through, your, through the air. So that's a little experiment you can do on your own. Okay, so loudness is something we're going to talk about. It's intensity of sound. So, and that has to do with the pressure of the air, how much pressure, the higher the pressure, the, the louder we hear it. Um, but loudness is something that is subjective. In other words, we can say that sounds louder, that sounds soft, but we don't really, we can't measure that. What we can measure is something called intensity. And the the units we use are called decibels. I'm not going to get into how you calculate this, but just know that it's a logarithmic scale. For every 10 decibels, the sound gets 10 times louder. So if uh, you're in a factory, a subway train is going to be 10 times louder than that. A rock music concert is going to be, uh, well, maybe five times louder. 
So every 10 jump here is actually a 10 times fold. So you can see the scale. So it's called a logarithmic scale. And the way you measure it is you have something called an oscilloscope. The microphone measures pressure, and that can translate into the, a graph. Uh, we humans, we can take pretty much up to 85 decibels for a long period of time and not have any hearing damage. But once you go above 85, uh, especially if you're working in the, for a long period of time, you need some hearing protection. So in your OSHA safety classes, that's why they really, you may not notice it, but if you're in a 100 decibel, 115 decibel right now, you're not going to notice anything wrong. But as you get older, especially to my age, you'll start to have what's called tinnitus, which is a lovely ringing in your ear that you hear all the time. It's really distracting. But it's this buildup of, yes, I used to play in a rock band, and I'm sure for 10 years I was doing damage, and I had no idea until now that this damage was happening. So it's worthwhile protecting your ears while you're young. You'll have nice healthy hearing for a longer period of your time and hopefully won't need a hearing aid, which I probably will need at some soon date. Okay, natural frequency. So this is the case where natural frequencies, everything that vibrates, everything can vibrate. So everything has a natural frequency with it that vibrates. And if you can add to that vibration with that same frequency, you actually can force the object to move back and forth faster or with more intensity. So this can be um, thought of like, is there, uh, tuning forks are a great demonstration of this. And, and again, we have them at school. So we come back, we'll do, hopefully we'll be able to do some experiments, but you can actually hit one tuning fork. And if this tuning fork is the same frequency, the sound waves from this tuning fork will actually start to vibrate that tuning fork. We call that forced vibration. It's when this object, you're, you're vibrating that object, but it's the only thing vibrating this is the sound itself. So the sound waves here are actually starting to vibrate this. Uh, pianos, uh, instruments, guitars, they all have a sounding board, which helps amplify the sound. So the piano here, the string will vibrate, but then the board itself will start to vibrate. Um, long after, you know, you can actually hear the vibration after the string stops vibrate, you can still hear the board vibrate a little bit. Okay, so this one th way to look at this is look with a swing. So let's say a swing has a natural frequency because of the length of the chain provides with a certain period. And if you push on somebody, every time they come back to you, you push again with the same frequency of the swing, then uh, the swing will start to go higher and higher. That's how that works. So every time you get the swing back to you, you push it, it gives a little more swing, and then the person goes higher and higher, and hopefully this doesn't happen to you. Uh, this is called natural frequency, and you're, you're basically just adding to the natural frequency of the object. And this can have consequences on bridges. Uh, when they first, some bridges get built, and they just happen to build it with a natural frequency where the wind if it's blowing a certain direction with a certain speed, it will actually start to vibrate this bridge and then the vibrations will just kind of build up and build up and they actually have video. Again, oh, I would show this in class. Uh, we, there's a video of a bridge uh, that is actually falls apart because of this vibration. I think that's all we're gonna have. Oh, do we have another slide? Okay, interference is the last thing I'm gonna cover. Uh, constructive interference, as we said with waves, is when the amplitudes, the uh, peaks add to the peak, so you get a louder, you get a higher amplitude. In sound, what we hear is a higher loudness, like a, a more intensity. Destructive interference occurs when there is a fainter sound or no sound, like the noise canceling your phones. Okay. I think I got a 15 limit. This graphs here show how the um, these two are adding. And I think I'm going to stop here. Okay, so do uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I'll be happy to answer them. And keep safe.